Hi folks, so in this video here, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to briefly, quick, or sorry, very quickly set up um, an axonometric plane, okay, for this is for axonometric projection, okay, there's three types that you need to know if you're leaving cert, okay, in DCG, you need to know how to do the isometric, you need to know how to do the diametric, and you need to know how to do the trimetric, okay, the only difference between them is the angles that are created in between these three axes here, the X, the Y, and the Z axis, now, in isometric, which is what is going to be done in this video, all the axes are actually going to be equal to one another. So that's why it's called isometric. For diametric, you will have two angles the same. And then for trimetric, you're actually going to have three different angles. But in regards to isometric, if you think of it like a circle, if I divide 360 divided by 3, every one of these angles in here is 120 degrees. 120 and 120. Okay? And these axes are called the X y and z axis now depending on the orientation of your object sometimes the x can be over here and the z can be over here so how we actually set this up first of all usually is we pick a point roughly in the middle of our page we do a vertical line and then what we're going to do is from that point in the middle of the page after doing the vertical line we're going to do a line down 30 degrees to the left and then the process for over and you're going to do a line down at 30 degrees to the right okay now step number two is what you want to do is you want to create the axonometric plane but before i do that just a little brief one here in this section over here if you think of these like the corner of a room this is the corner where i suppose you've got the floor a wall here and a wall here now if we take it the x y version that means that this wall over here if i was to actually put that kind of in there this wall over here this wall would actually be on the vertical plane so i'm just going to put that and kind of, i'll actually put it down here that is the vertical plane. Okay. Where this wall is, if this one is the vertical plane, then technically that's for the front view. This one over here would be for the side view. Okay. So in this case, this actually would be the end vertical plane. And then finally, where the two walls meet the floor would make this one down here in this section here, in the XZ axis, obviously, this is going to be the horizontal plane. I'm going to write that in here. That's the horizontal plane in this section here. Now, what we need to do is we have to create an axonometric plane. And what that's going to do is it's going to help us see an object in three dimensions. So, to set up an axonometric plane in this version of isometric, what we're going to do is we're going to create a triangle that is intersecting all of these three planes. And you can create that equal, it's actually going to be an equilateral triangle. Okay, so what I can do is I can set that triangle up how big I want. I usually always start down here in the horizontal plane section. I'm going to set up a triangle in here like this. So I'm going to start off by doing a horizontal line that cuts the x-axis right here and the z-axis right here. Where it hits the two of those, I'm now going to do a line at 60 degrees until it cuts the y-axis. Okay, and obviously I'm doing it from where it cut the x-axis previously. And then where it cuts the y-axis, I'm going to go down at 60 degrees. And if I'm accurate, this point here should meet up at this point. Quite happy with that. And there we go. So there is our axonometric plane put in. Now what you have to imagine, as I said previously, this is the corner of a room where the two walls and the floor meet. Okay, this axonometric plane in reality is actually going on to infinity. Okay, so it actually spreads out beyond the vertical end vertical planes, but we're only seeing where those edges of that plane are cutting the vertical plane, okay, and all the other planes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up up here for our elevation view. So how we do that is, from this point here and this point here, we're going to project perpendicular to this line. Now, this line is at 60 degrees, so 60 plus what makes 90? 30. So we're going to project up at 30 degrees, which will be perpendicular. So 30 degrees up to the left like this, and likewise with this one. Okay, now to set up a 90 degree angle inside here, we're going to have to follow a certain set of rules. Where those two lines are, anywhere out there, I can set it at any distance. I usually wouldn't make it too far, but I also wouldn't have it too close. Kind of picking, I suppose, like Goldilocks, we're trying to pick the one that's just right. So about, I'm going to estimate about there is fine. So about there. Now... That line there is at 60 degrees, it is parallel with this one here, okay? It's perpendicular to the 30 degree line here. I want to get the middle of that line. So what could I do to get the middle of it? I could bisect it using my compass. 
but this point here is actually right in the middle so if I was to actually extend that up at 30 degrees where it cuts through right there I have now found the middle okay using that I'm going to put my point on there the compass point pencil point out to here I'm going to swing a semicircle and there we go where that semicircle cuts through okay the circle at this point here I'm now going to connect it to this point and this point and what we want to do is we're going to create kind of like a triangle almost but really what we're doing is we're creating an axis that line there and this line here okay what I'm actually doing there is this line is technically an edge view of the horizontal plane okay it is an edge view of the horizontal plane so that is like my x line okay this line up here is my y and when I'm looking along here this point here would technically be my z okay but my z line because I'm looking in this direction I'm seeing the whole z line as a point view but I've now got a perfectly 90 degree angle in there where I can now draw in my elevation view okay because that's where the elevation is going it goes on the vertical plane now just to repeat that step if you had another view obviously and you had to put in the end elevation you would obviously go to the other side that goes on the end vertical plane so project up at 60 degrees or sorry 30 degrees to the right like this exactly the same with this one once again same method pick a distance that you think will suffice I'm going to pick about here I'm happy with that and then likewise I have to get the middle of that line okay so once again that was at 60 60 to get the middle project out this line here all construction lines obviously you use a pencil using a biro for the purpose of the video now that I've got the middle of the line out to here I want to swing a semicircle ever so lightly and there we go now using that method once again just get my plane here Connect this point to where the semicircle cuts through this center line here. And connect it to this one as well. And once again, I've got a perfectly 90 degree angle inside here where I would be doing my end elevation, which is on the end vertical plane. So once again, if we were to write the axis looking in in this direction, this would be the Y. This line here now is the Z. And the point view in this case is actually the x-axis as I look in there. Okay, so that's that one done. Okay, elevation will be positioned here, end elevation here. Now the last one we obviously have to do is the plan view, which is down here in the horizontal plane. Luckily enough, the plan view, you can follow the exact same steps, but obviously in this case, we're just going perpendicular to this time. Because it's horizontal, we're just projecting straight, excuse me, down. So I'm going to go down and down. Now, just move this down so you can see the bottom of my page there clearly. At this point, same method, what I would often do is I'd start off, I'm going to keep it quite low on the page now, so about here. And at this point and this point, now to get the center, what would I do? Bring this down and then do a semi circle. Okay? But luckily enough, in this version, when we're doing the isometric view of axonometric, these lines in here will always meet at 45 degrees. So I can project up now at 45 degrees, simply like this. And then from this point here at 45 degrees like that. It's a nice little shortcut on this one. Okay. And as you can see then, what we're going to do is we're going to write in the axis. So this axis here is actually going to be the x-axis. This axis here would be the z-axis. And when I'm looking down on top of the object, where the two of them meet, would now be the y-axis. Okay. So that's kind of how you do the setup of an axonometric projection question. Inside in this section here, you draw the elevation, plan, end elevation. And all of them then will come back and make a three-dimensional object inside here, which is actually on your axonometric plane, which is this surface here. Okay, so that's how you set up that, guys. I hope you found that video helpful.